How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now today I want to walk you through how to securely mount a solar panel to an asphalt shingle roof. Now specifically for this example, we'll be using this eight foot by 12 foot storage shed. It's completely off grid. We've already done a bunch of different projects to it, but now I want to get that 360 watt panel mounted to the Eastern side of my roof. Now for me, the Eastern facing side gets the best sun exposure, but that's because of where my trees are positioned and just know yours is probably going to be a little bit different. Remembering that a Southern facing panel is going to be our best option if that gets good sun exposure and it's available to you. So let's jump into it. I'll show you an easy product to use and it kind of scales nicely whether you're doing one panel like this or like six panels that I have on my detached garage it kind of fits all those different needs. So what we'll be using is a mini rail system from Signature Solar. It comes with flashing here which is going to go up underneath your shingles and then we have two mounting holes here which actually have a little bit of a lip on them to reduce the chances of water getting through these lag holes. So we got three inch lag bolts. We take this bracket. The bracket has also a gasket material on the bottom. Then we would place two lags underneath that and we need to hit our rafters. We're not just looking to go through the decking of the roof. That's not gonna cut it. We actually do need to hit the structural member so we can get the three inches sunk into a solid piece of lumber opposed to just a half of an inch if you're doing the decking. Then once you have that all set up, you'll have your mini rail. Your mini rail is a six inch rail. So we're not doing a large railing system, right? At each of these locations, you're just gonna have a mini rail and you're either gonna mount them vertically like this, which is how I'm going to mount those. And then I'll be able to move up and down my end clamp here to support the panel, or you could do horizontal. So you do have the flexibility to tailor it to your own application. And then we'll have end clamps. Just know end clamps come in three different sizes. 30 millimeters, 35 millimeters, and 40 millimeters. Not always, but usually the 30 millimeters would be associated with smaller panels like 100 watt panels, and that is the thickness of the actual frame system. So you'll just measure the thickness and then match that up. The 30 millimeters is the actual gap that you would have and should match the frame thickness that you're seeing on your panels. If you have 300 watt or 400 watt panels, you need to go up to most likely the 40 millimeter or at least the 35 millimeter, but just make those measurements before you go ahead and order your hardware. Now, the other clamps that you would have is if you had multiple rows, and that would be these mid clamps, right? These mid clamps would go in the middle of your multiple rows, and it is a one size fits all, so you don't have to worry about sizing those correctly. Now, each of our installs is gonna be a little bit different, but you need to get your plan of attack right now. I know that I'm gonna be mounting close to this. I'm gonna go a little bit higher to make sure I'm three quarters of an inch off the bottom of this course. You don't, you wouldn't wanna be right at the end of the course because that could promote leaks. You wanna be three, at least three quarters of an inch up. And then my other mini rail would have to be spaced at the overall width of my panels so that this rail system could have an end clamp down here. And then for me, 39 inches up, I would have my other end clamp at the top of the panel. Then in terms of spacing from left to right, my rafters are spaced 24 inches on center. So what I'm gonna do is mount one here, and then I'm gonna go down 48 inches. So I'm gonna jump over one, 48 inches, and then mount my other two. And then that's gonna give me pretty perfect spacing for four mounting locations on the one panel that I'll be installing. So let's go ahead and start getting these installed. And I'll also let you know what happens when you think you find the rafter, you get your lag screw sunk in, but you see, especially inside of a shed like this, where you can see the decking, you see it actually miss the rafter. What do we do then? How do we get out of that situation? There is a little bit of a tip there, which makes it so you don't have to actually move your mounting location and you can still get a secure hold. So I'm gonna take my measurement I checked inside and transfer it outside. This is accounting for the overhang of the asphalt shingles. So that was well over the 24 inch spacing and more like 26 and 3 eighths to get the exact middle point of the rafter. Now check for any nails here and pop out any that would interfere with the flashing sitting where I want it to. And now reinstall the nail there, just offset a little bit. Now, if you wanna check, you can go up under that course of shingles and just take a screw and drive that in to see if you are getting resistance. If you're getting resistance, you are hitting the rafter and you were correct in your spacing. If not, that's easier to seal that hole because it's underneath the shingle. Then I'll use some sealant here 
just general roofing sealant along those channels and that will help to seal up the bottom of the flashing. I'll lift it up so I don't smear the sealant and then when it's in place I'll set that down and then we'll start to get ready to drive the two different lag screws here through that bracket. And this is where, again, you should really feel those bite in. It should be much more than just the sheathing and should feel resistance all the way down as you're driving those in. Now I'll sink them all the way down for the first one with a little bit left once I get the second one and then do final tightening here to get it fully secured. Now, once you have that in place, again, you'll need to know which way your mini rail is going to go. Mine is in that vertical direction because I'll be supporting the bottom and the top for my panel because it's, it's oriented horizontally on my roof. And here is what the first one would look like when it's fully installed. And it's nice to see that sealant coming out the bottom of the flashing. Now I will take measurements for each and every location. So I have four individual locations and I won't just say, okay, once I found this location, now I'm just going to go 48 inches. I double check that inside to give me the best chance of hitting each and every one of these rafters. Again, we'll talk about what happens if you miss. Is there any way that you can go back and get the support you need without actually moving the mini rail setup? So I'll go through on the second side. Now this second side is pretty close to the ridge. I wouldn't want to get any closer than what that is, but it gives me my 39 inch spacing, which is the width of my solar panel. Don't forget your sealant on each one of these, and then you'll set it in place and just keep going through each one of these steps, taking your time and making sure you have secure connections. This is my last location. Again, I transferring the measurement from inside. So that was actually 48 and 3 eighths of an inch opposed to just a 48 inch spacing because the rafter was a little bit off in this location. Drive those two lags in and we'll finish up our four locations. All right, we're ready to start the panels, but if you guys need links, look below the video in the description or a pinned comment. You'll see the exact project from Signature Solar that I'm using. Just remember, you need to get the right end clamps, the 30 millimeter, 35 millimeter, or 40 millimeter. So take your time getting the right one there so you're not scrambling around once the parts come in and things aren't working out for you. But before we mount the panel, let's talk about what happens if one of our lag screws did not hit the rafter. What I would do in that instance is I would back out the lag screw, so I'd back it out, but I would see where that was at, and then I would actually cut some blocking and then place that between my rafters. I might have to nail that in place to get some of the roofing nails sunk into the blocking, and then I would bring two screws through the end of this rafter, two screws to the end of this rafter, and then I would sink back in my lag screws where then they would be going through the blocking. Now this two by four, just for demo, you actually would need a two by six or a two by eight to get enough meat, enough spacing to sink both of those lags in. So that's how I would handle it if I was not able to hit the rafters with both of my lags. As always, take care when bringing a panel up on a roof. Any gust of wind can knock the panel on the ground and you right off the ladder, so take care. Now I'm putting the end clamps here in so I can have something to hold that while I move left to right to balance out my spacing, and then also up and down to make sure that it is parallel to the roof surface. Now once I get the bottom ones done, I'll just jump up to the top and tighten the last two. That's it. So our panel's looking good, and I really like these mini rail systems. For the price, they're super practical for DIY projects like this. Just note, this is a complete DIY project. Depending on where you live, sometimes a little portable power station to solar panels like this can be held to high standards like you're installing it on a living dwelling, and you might have to have all sorts of different safety features and offsets from your roof line. Just know it's gonna vary for us depending on where you're actually building this at. Also note, I did not ground this system. There are the bonding clips that would go between the rail and your panel, and then especially when you're bringing multiple panels together, these will help to bond the panels together, and then you'll be able to run just one ground wire to a single panel, and then that will pull your full string of panels together because you use these clips. Then you can bring that down to a ground rod. Also, when it comes to wiring, I've done it a few different ways. I've used 
these small boxes like the easy solar box where you'll again have some flashing put it up under an asphalt shingle and then you'll bring it through gland connectors here and then down into your shed this is a cool little product and you can check out right here where i actually installed this exact product and i really like the finished result now for this actual install i'm going to do a little different wiring so make sure you're subscribed to our channel as that video will be coming out in the next couple days so thanks for joining me on this one and we'll catch you on one of those next videos take care